Welcome back. We'll continue on from Cameron Corner. This is the official marker for the junction of the three states. And just beside it is the dog fence. The dog fence was originally built in the 1880s to stop the spread of the rabbit plague across the state borders. It turned out to be a wasted effort because there was already rabbits on both sides of the fence. In 1914 the fences were repaired in order to keep the dingoes off of sheep grazing land. This fence is one of the longest structures in the world. At 5,600 odd kilometres long, it stretches from the Darling Downs in Queensland to the cliffs on the Nullarbor in South Australia. The corner store usually only sees a couple of cars a day until an event comes up like the Birdsville races and then there could be up to 300 cars a day. Better sign the visitor's book. Driving west towards the Strislecky track today, we're getting into the desert country now, sand dune after sand dune. The old Strezlecki track heading up to Inaminka. There's a massive amount of oil pumps working out here. You can really see on roads like this why it's important to keep the tyre pressures down. You can actually really see it well on our van right at the moment. The tyres flex and take out that first point of impact. The town of Inaminka has a store with fuel pumps and a pub with meals and accommodation, but not much more. Cool in here, isn't it? I'm not going without aircon tonight. Must have got up to nearly 50 yesterday. Well, it's nice and cool in here. 27 and a half degrees inside, 47 degrees outside. I've come down to the campground. But in Aminka, it is just so hot out here at the moment. We've done something we wouldn't normally do, and that's park under the gum trees. But it's the only way we can get a bit of shade. We've got the generator out. It's running flat out to try and cool the van down. Very pretty out here, but uh, very hot at the moment. I think we'll just pull off here and let him go past. Dig tree where the Burke and Wills expedition ended in 1861. The landscape out here makes you realise just how tough it was for the early explorers. The tree is located on the northern bank of Cooper Creek and it's between 200 and 250 years old. It's hard to imagine being stuck out here for months on end, right in the middle of summer. Flies are horrendous out here. A likeness of Robert O'Hara Burke's face 
was carved into this tree in 1898 in honour of his brave expedition. stop will be Eramanga, but we're getting a bit low on fuel so it's time to stop and top up. There's not many service stations out here so we usually carry a couple of jerry cans of diesel with us. Now it's only 160 so we should be there in about two hours. We can't push too hard, yes. not in this heat. Be pushing 50 degrees again today. So we'll just push on steady. The Aramanga Natural History Museum was a high priority for us to visit. 100 million years ago, Outback Australia was a very different place. Um, we work on up to four different species of um, titanosaurs in here at any one time and um, Cooper obviously which is our largest which yeah. you're about soon. Yeah. So from our measurements he actually, his species actually grew up to about 30 metres long which is the length of this shed and six and a half metres to his hip. So, um, so that's the front and the hind leg of Cooper on the left side um, as stance would have been so how far apart he would have stood. Now um, this one here is thought to be a clavicle um, which is a bone at the front here and we've got um, a humerus, so an upper arm bone, on both the left and the right side, and that one's partial. We've got a bit of a vertebra and some ribs as well. On the wet clay, you can see it crumbles. But you can see here, I think quite clearly you can see what we're talking about. We've got a, a lower jaw of the diprotodon, of the mandible, the incisors here, um, which are the bits underneath which they probably yeah. use for digging up roots and things like that. Um, the tooth rows in here and so that complete lower jaw or mandible is all just sitting there and it's been jammed up against. What we have here is a pelvis, a complete pelvis of a diprotodon. So these diprotodon are those massive great big um, marsupials, in fact they're the largest marsupials in the world. And uh, they're like a giant marsupial bear. And then we find a huge amount of plant material as well. Um, so these are some fossilised trees, um, as you can see. Give it a bit of a... It gives you... It sounds very forcefully. The work these people do to remove the sediment from these bones is so very time consuming and very labour intensive. That's exactly how you'd find a piece of bone on the surface. And you wouldn't... Most people wouldn't realise it. No, no, it just looks like an intriguing rock. Does it steam up? So it's his upper leg bone. It measures 1.9 metres long and weighs about 100 kilos. So it's relatively heavy, as you can imagine. Tom's a much smaller titanosaur, as you can see. Uh, possibly thought to be a juvenile species, same species as Cooper, um, but still beautifully preserved. Now, that's a bull bone. Uh, bull femur, so same bone just on a bull. As you can see. So this is the left half of Cooper's pelvis. The right half will come in very soon. So that's that bit there. You can see the obturator foramen up there. Yeah. You can see the condyle down here. We saw mandibles earlier, two of them in the thing. This yeah. is what they'll look like when they're completed. You can see those beautiful incisors at the front. The um, that's teeth. actual bone. That that's is all bone. Actual, yeah. Yeah. So that's all bone. Um, this here is your ascending ramus, which is where your jaw clicks in and you open it close. In these small outback towns, the local pub is usually the centre of the community. The publican, Scotty, was a bit camera shy, but he was still happy to show us his opal collection from his own mind. That's when the pub's not too busy. Little can of quilty. We 
we're making our way back to South East Queensland to help with the preparations for our eldest daughter's wedding. Foxtrap Roadhouse. This place sells everything from fuel to ammunition, meals, beer and local crafts. The further east we travel, the more grass we see. It's lovely. Whenever we pass through Mitchell, we always pull up at the hot spa pools. It's a great place to relax the muscles, but unfortunately, this time they are closed for renovations. This is our camp just outside of Chinchilla. Lovely little spot. Down there's the river. Not much in it now though. There's a good sized goanna. As long as he doesn't run up my leg. Not far outside of Toowoomba. While the wedding was being organised, we'd planned to stay at the Toowoomba showgrounds for a few weeks. While Chris is helping with the wedding preparations, I'm filling in time, repainting and retackling some of our old favourite fishing lures in preparation for the next leg of our trip, heading north into Barra country. 